Yeah. I'm going to call a special meeting for May 26, 2020 to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Here. Meyer. Here. Mead. Here. Truka. Here. Yoakum. Here. Both. Here. Also. Here. Um, we received a lot of communications and petitions. Some of them are three pages long. I've had a lot of back and forth with the council clerk here on it. We're going to read them all. Uh, they're all in the packet. Um, I'm, I don't want to be the one that makes the decision to not read them, but if the council members want to have a vote on whether to read them or not, whether to have Mr. Hill read them or not, I'd be. Uh, yes, the meeting being taped. The meeting's taped. Mr. Hess has. I think we should so the yeah. public can hear them. Yeah. Okay. We're going to three of them. Okay. Sorry, Todd. That's right. Um, we've got six communications here. The first one is from Kyle Brandt, 1217 Teddy Avenue, New Cyrus. Uh, this is dated Thursday, May 21, to City Council regarding letter of support for the Safer Grant. Uh, dear City Council, I am writing to the City Council today in support of the City of Cyrus applying for the Safer Grant. I believe the City of Cyrus should apply for the Safer Grant. I believe the City would be helped substantially by not only applying for the grant, but also if approved by FEMA for the grant accepting it. From what Mayor Reeser has said in the last council meeting on May 20th, FEMA will have the safer grant again next year and it will, quote, will be better. How does anyone know for sure that the grant will be better or what better will even be? What happens if it's time next year to apply for the grant and it is the same as it originally was this year? Roughly, there are prob probably about five to six firefighters that will be eligible to retire in the next three to four years. And then the city will have to try to hire firefighters to replace them. If the city accepts the grant, then those firefighters from the grant could replace those retiring and not replace the others, which would save the city some money. Maybe not all of them will retire, but probably a couple will retire. How can you expect them to safely and continuously protect the city with only three firefighters per shift? That is extremely unsafe. What happens if they get injured in a fire? How long before any help arrives? Probably at the fastest 15 minutes to call in off-duty firefighters for them to get to the station house and get their gear and then respond to the scene and try to find the injured firefighters. According to Mr. Myers, the city has to decide if they are going to stay in the ambulance district by the end of this year. When Mr. Myers brought the idea of the contract up to Mayor Reeser, he asked why don't we stay with the ambulance district and set an end date in the future to end the contract with the ambulance district. I am not sure if this is part of the contract currently or if they would include it in the next contract. They fee to end the contract before the end of the term of it. Something that I have not heard mentioned is the overtime that the city has to pay, them to, pay to firefighters currently by filling in on other shifts and being called in on their off days. I know the city has to balance its budget every year and the layoffs are always from the safety forces. I understand that their payroll takes up a majority of the general fund, but one thing that has not been talked about is the administration taking less money for a year or two until the tax revenue comes back up. One question that Mr. Fankhauser had brought up that to me was not really answered was how will the city be able to afford staying with the ambulance district when the Portsmouth Ambulance Company stated that the fee would double. Auditor Schiffer answered it in my opinion halfway. She said there would be cuts across all departments. If the city can't afford new firefighters, then how can the city afford to pay double the amount for the ambulance? To an outsider, Mayor Reeser is pushing very hard to not even apply for the grant. What is the big deal of at least applying for it? It wouldn't hurt anything to try. Thank you for your time. Kyle Grant, 1217, Teddy Avenue. The second letter is um, from Gregory C. Hershey, president of IAF Local 1120, which is the Firefighters Union. Dear City Council, uh, once again, the IAF Local 1120 is responding to the misinformation that the mayor is distributing to this council and the public. The mayor's inability to state the facts is staggering. I know that this is a tough decision that is being made, but I feel that if you are informed with truth, then it will make your job that much easier. The mayor stated that the ballot was 16 people. We are currently at 14, which means we would have to add six more, bringing us to 22. Facts um, for ordinance number 12, 2020, proposed staffing with the safer grant. Well, I'm sorry, let me try this again. Um, ordinance number 12, 2020, one fire chief, one code enforcement officer, one administrative captain, three captains, six lieutenants, 12 firefighters, for a total of 24. Proposed staffing with the safer grant, one fire chief, one chief, covers position undetermined if this has to be filled, three captains, three lieutenants, 
12 firefighters for a total of 20. The mayor stated that the city offered shared work Ohio to the police and fire department and both unions rejected it. Facts, one, the administration did offer a 32 hour work week to the fire department, however, he never brought that to the union. This matter was discussed with the acting chief and he rejected it on the fact that we currently work a 53 hour work week before receiving overtime and or pays based off a bi-weekly salary and this plan would not be feasible. Two, our department is already understaffed. How can we reduce the hours work and still provide service? It is not that we don't want to help, we just can't do it in the manner that this, this administration wants to do it. Three, if an employee works more than 36 hours a week, then this plan would not apply to that employee. Therefore, even if we agreed, then we could not respond on call back for emergency when needed. The mayor stated that he was the only one in favor of EMS except CPT. Trumley, when he wanted to, uh, or Captain Trumley, when he wanted to bring EMS to the fire department in 2017. The future of EMS in Cyrus is putting it in the fire department. Even the fire department didn't speak in favor of it. I am in favor of this, but I think it's the wrong time. We talked about 17 members being adequate. That is only hiring one more firefighter at this time, not six. Fact, number one, the plan he referred to in 2017 was never presented to the union. When asked for it on paper, it was stated that it was in their head, not written down. Two, council wanted to see the plan and it was an approve it or we will make it happen plan. This was unacceptable to council at this time. Three. The union was in favor of EMS, but we agreed with city council on the matter. The mayor stated EMS is stable, and we had no issue with that until the end of 2021. Fact number one, the current provider is not stable, and I hope that the information needed to prove this is made clear to city council. CJAD, the Central Joint Ambulance District, is aware of the issues, and we feel that this is leaving our citizens at risk. The mayor stated I have some very, very good news that you can make all this discussion, that can make all this discussion mute. Was on the phone with FEMA today asking some questions and clarification on the fight for the grant. What are, we, what are you planning on doing in 2021? Will you have a safe grant? Answer was yes. Not only have a safe grant, but not only will have what this year has in it, but more. So my take is as more is like 2011 and 2012 when we can bring some people back from layoffs. I think that is we have to wait. That seals the whole deal. I hope you see it my way. You're wasting a while. You're wasting a whole year of firefighters that could be used in 2024. So you in effect are costing the taxpayers $600,000. Fact number one. I called FEMA and I was told 2021 safer grants had not been determined and that any information on it would be pure speculation. Two, I believe stimulus number four passed by the House and it may have more money for safer retention from the layoff, but the Senate and uh, President are balking at that. I think the number from Pelosi was $1 trillion for state and local governments and our hope is for $500 billion. Not sure yet how that will be broken up and how much to safer. Three, application for a grant is not guaranteeing the board. We did not receive a grant for a new fire truck, assuming that we would receive the current grant or any other is speculation. The mayor stated we wait for Dr. Kramer's report and have some town halls on city on, on, on city and see what the people want regarding an EMS. Maybe they want this in the fire department and are willing to pay for it. Fact, number one, the mayor had seen the draft report from Dr. Kramer and referred to page numbers when refuting the report that he asked for. Two, we would prefer to see if we can do this without any additional tax and this grant provides us the time to do that. A baseline of quality of service, of, uh, a baseline of quality of current service would be present for them to vote for if the tax is needed. Three, we didn't have town halls the last time he wanted this. We didn't, he didn't even present a plan. The mayor stated why well, have six firefighters just waiting around for a whole, a whole year before we actually need them. Fact, number one, the addition would be three more firefighters they added due to the current staffing levels. And two, we would use this time wisely to train them to the hazards of our town in order to provide a seamless transition. I hope this helps you make informed decisions on this matter. We look forward to serving this community the best we can. Feel free to contact me with any questions. There is the Hershey President, IAF of Local 20. The next letter is from William Stuckert, um, dated Monday, May 18, addressed to uh, Council. It is regarding the Safer Grant. Dear members of the Bucyrus City Council, I just want to give all of you my opinion on the Safer Grant issue. I won't go into a lot of detail, but I think you should have as much public input as possible. I totally disagree with Mayor Beezer's reasoning for vetoing the resolution to pursue the grant. I encourage you to stand strong and unanimous, unanimously vote to override Mayor Reese's veto of Resolution 219-2020. Wayne Bay Stuckert, 205 North Spring Street, East Cyrus. The next letter is from um, R. Thomas Walker, President of the East Cyrus Patrol Order of Police, number 68. It's dated May 19. It's addressed to the citizens of East Cyrus and City Council and the administration. Um, citizens of East Cyrus and City Council. Over the past few weeks, FOP number 68 has attempted to offer an opposing perspective, an opposing perspective on the current EMS proposal. Before the Cyrus Council votes tonight, we submit the following as a point of public record. Only window shopping. In an exchange with Council, FOP number 68 was told the safer grant application was mainly to see what the city qualifies for. We contend this is more than window shopping, otherwise tonight's vote would be unnecessary. 
In spite of acknowledging the economic crisis of COVID-19, some in council are attempting to manipulate the balance between our local legislative and executive branches, opting to set the dangerous, dangerous precedent of legislating and administrative policy, forcing our administration to sign a grant. This indicates an active pursuit of this proposal, not an assessment of its feasibility. What's the harm? A council member asked what harm this vote can do. For that answer, I would refer council members to Mayor Reese's 2018 EMS proposal and the corresponding media coverage. At a health, health and safety meeting in early 2018, Councilman Myers referenced this research and stated, the city cannot afford to fund a city-operated ambulance through the Cyrus Fire Department. Mr. Myers concluded this despite the availability of a safer grant and with BFD at a staffing level of 15 firefighters. In that same meeting, the city was debating water expansion to surrounding townships and discussed leaving the ambulance center. Councilman Schott quickly pointed out the hypocrisy of abandoning our townships with annual services, then asking them to play ball when it comes to expanding water distributions. On October 23, 2018, the Cyrus Telegraph Forum published an article outlining the endless contract with our city. In the article, Councilman Myers again referenced his research and concluded it was too risky for me to think we could do this on our own, and alluded to the necessity for an additional levy. He and other council members encouraged me to research to team up with the neighboring communities in the endless district. So what's the harm? Some of our past leaders have repeatedly abandoned contiguous townships in an effort to negotiate from positions of authority. The decision to alienate our neighbors has resulted in animosity and distrust, which is particularly particularly troubling when so many work in and or pay taxes to the city of Bucyrus. A vote to override Mayor Reeser's veto again tells our neighbors we don't want or need them, rendering any form of reconciliation almost impossible. I sincerely hope this is not the message we want to send. We can't wait till we run out of time. Lodge number 68 realizes EMS cannot be ignored and we choose to support having a Ricky Cyrus fire. Our only stipulation has always been financial sustainability, not profit from your solvency. In an effort to gain perspective, our team has reached out to EMS and finance professionals, elected officials from across our state, as well as numerous <coughs> public records requests. This information indicates there is going to be a substantial cumulative deficit after year four of this proposal, in spite of 100% funding for the first three years. In the absence of a significant revenue increase, this undertaking will most certainly lead to fiscal emergency and or staggering layoffs in the only other agency that shares the safety force's budget, the Cyrus Police Department. Please note I reached out to some council members who referenced an informal conversation regarding our research and only one inquiry. I'm certain council is inundated with facts, figures, budgets, and statistics. I'm also certain they want to do what's in the best interest of our community. I believe that was the reason William Kramer was hired to conduct a feasibility study regarding EMS and also why so many of us anxiously awaited his report. The draft of Mr. Kramer's independent study was very supportive of the Cyrus Fire handling EMS. He rendered a glowing report of our firefighters' professionalism and their eagerness to take on this responsibility. With that said, on page 59 of his independent assessment, Mr. Kramer clearly states the following regarding the current proposal. It will be difficult to accomplish under the current environment, primarily because of financial uncertainties. The decision may have to wait, but Cyrus should not abandon this plan. Kramer W. 2020. As indicated by Mr. Kramer, who reviewed all the information provided by Mr. Myers and the city administration, the prudent option is not to pursue this now. Despite the what is and hyperbole, this can be done at another time. Otherwise, Mr. Kramer would not have suggested it. Time affords the city an opportunity to, do, opportunity to mend relationships with our townships and ensure the success of our EMS program. In closing, I submit we all want EMS to be handled by Cyrus Fire. However, while other departments are using, using the safer grant to supplement existing programs, we are seeking a risky half a million dollar project in the middle of an economic crisis. I encourage council to act with prudency and objectivity in tonight's vote and not override the mayor's veto. Sincerely, our Thomas Walker President, the Cyrus Patrol over Police, number 68. Uh, the next letter is dated June May 19. Uh, it is from Patty Hope, 415 West Southern Avenue in B. Cyrus. It is addressed to council members. Please reconsider and refrain from overriding Mayor Reeser's veto of the safer grant application. While we are experiencing sharply reduced revenues from income taxes and from state and federal resources, in an uncertain future due to the COVID-19 pandemic, fiscal discipline should be your primary responsibility. Having staff now will likely lead to layoffs in three years when our city resumes or when our city resumes full funding of six extra firefighters. Ambulance concerns should be resolved as a safety issue, and there were several options before a committee. Sincerely, Patty Hope, 450 West Southern Avenue. The last letter is dated Tuesday, May 19, 2020. It is addressed to the Cyrus City Council. This is Stephanie Serena, 1510 Woodlawn Avenue. I am asking the City Council to please vote to overwrite the producer's veto. Why turn down government grants that the city won't have to pay back, especially when the department is understaffed? It sounds to me like Reeser's plan is to tear apart the fire department and this grant throws a wrench in it. If the goal is for the city to operate our own EMS, why tear apart the fire department? It makes zero sense unless his only tunnel vision and goal is to bust up IAFF Local 1120. Would his desire to fill the city's fire department with part-time employees increase our home insurance premiums? Based on our ever-rising water bills, it's evident he doesn't care. 
He's so concerned about attracting new residents, but who wants to move somewhere with an understaffed and or part-time city fire department in a company with sky-high home insurance? That type of part-time setup might work for upper Sandusky, but <coughs> the population of Osiris is almost double of uppers. How does he expect that to work? He claims this grant would bring about an unfair reduction in staff to the police department, but what about the current understaffing of the fire department? That's not unfair. Suddenly his concern is extinguished. His disdain for that needed city department is apparent, and he doesn't try to hide it. Stephanie Serena, 1510 Rolon Avenue, and we need to accept and file all these communications. Second. 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 Okay, granting permission for visitors to speak. Does anybody want to address council? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Okay, Bill. <coughs> Bill O'Rourke, 1042 Martha Avenue. Um, the reason I came here tonight is not so much about the safety grants, but the big picture. Um, the SABRE grant, from what I understand, is three years. I don't care whether it's covered 50% the first year, 100% the first year, whatever. After three years, then it's up to the city to pick up the whole thing. Um, we're just talking, just talking salaries, benefits, whatever. You're probably approaching maybe close to $100,000 a person that you want to hire. If you, if you go to hire people after three years, you probably want to add a couple ambulances to do that. And then if it isn't going to work out, what are you going to do with them? Those ambulances are probably going to cost maybe $150,000 to purchase and invest in. Um, when I listen to a couple of the letters there, a lot of it is like, the benefit is now with the safer grant, which it is. But we have probably at least 40% of people that are retired. Um, they're not going to, uh, they can't afford anything right now. They won't be able to afford it probably in more than three years. And probably the other 60% of people that are working, the great majority of them don't work in, in uh, or don't live in Besides. So if they're working in Marion or uh, Mansfield, they're paying city taxes for those cities, not the so we're not, we're not getting much money from that. Uh, when I was back on finance, I went down to Gay one time because I was wondering why uh, they were supposedly making so much money off of their, their ambulance service. And uh, I spoke with the city auditor down there, and he didn't have any answers. He said everything was handled by, the, by a third party bill. Um, I don't, I don't know how you want to handle it. You, you have to think about all the people and where they're going to be in three years. If they're going to be, um, uh, if it's not going to work out, then what are we going to do? If you, if you don't have the money coming in to pay this after it comes out at the end of the three years, then you can't afford it to go into the state of emergency. Some of the things they, that we have now that didn't happen was there. I don't know what the, what the $200,000 park bonds, I don't know when they start or what they cost. Um, the, the fire truck they just purchased for maybe $600,000, they're probably paying $60,000 a year for that. Um, and the one, one they purchased, or the one they replaced, they have another one probably the same year. So my question is, in the, in the next 10 years, are they going to need another fire truck? When when I was on council, when I started it out, there was 400 some thousand dollars in a fire levy. And over, over the period of time, it's probably almost gone. And that was maybe going $30, $50 a year, whether it's for uh, for masks, for tanks, um, things which they needed. So in the next, say three, four years, if that's gone, then the city's gonna have to pay for that to, to keep, keep them properly uh, operational. And um, I, 
I just hope, just hope you all look past the shaker grain. You can't, you can't count on. I don't know what these other townships are going to do. Um, but the thing is, the Cyrus has to be able to take care of themselves if they need to, not depend on somebody else. And even if, even if an outside animal ser service is increased, uh, the fees where the citizens have to uh, pay more for it, it's probably still going to be cheaper than trying to uh, add additional people and staff them with the equipment and uh, other items which they may need. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening. My name is Greg Hershey. I'm the union president for Cyrus Fire Local 1120. The overwhelming majority of people agree EMS should be provided by the Cyrus Fire Department. Most opposition to EMS in the fire department revolves around the number of firefighters needed to provide adequate service while adding EMS. This argument also includes funding availability and the concern for the township. On the issue of manning, one statement is why I have six firefighters just waiting around for a whole year before we actually need them. The addition would be three more firefighters added due to the current staffing levels. <clears throat> we would use the time wisely to train them to the hazards of our town in order to provide a seamless transition. On the issue of funding, the application of the SAFER grant provides the opportunity to fund those needed firefighters to provide the service and all, offset the startup cost of running EMS. The staffing level at the fire department is lower right now than before the safety levy passed. How is that allowed to happen? Wasn't the safety levy supposed to keep both police and fire fully staffed? Full staffing at the fire department, according to the bill, is 24 members. We have never argued that we should have 24 members. We understand that this was economically not feasible. All we ever asked for was the ability to maintain staffing at the level that at the level it was when the citizens passed the safety forces letter. They maintained four on duty, not three, at the time so we could adhere to the two in, two out rule. We agree with Dr. Kramer that EMS can generate revenue that will help cover the cost of added firefighters while removing the uncertainties included at at least doubling subsidy required by Fort Smith. Application for the grant does not guarantee the award of the grant. However, it guarantees the opportunity to consider if awarded. The township concerns. It is our belief that you must have your own house in order before you can reach out and help others. What that looked like could only be speculated, but we firefighters never intend to be an island. Fort Smith informed Dr. Kramer of their intention to stay in town and provide a service to the townships and non-emergency transports. We thank you for your time and effort that you put in to this, and I hope that no matter what side of the argument people stand on, they take that into consideration. In closing, the decision is yours to make, and the Cyrus Local 1120 will support whatever you decide. We will continue to provide the best service possible with the tools provided. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, um, Next we have the, um, well, one of the special, one of the reasons we had a special meeting is because the mayor amended the proclamation for the emergency declaration since city hall is open back up. We have uh, the new hours for city hall and the original proclamation is the next stage after that. So, we, we need to have, council needs to have a vote on whether they're gonna accept this amended proclamation. So I need a Mr. President, do we have, this is the original in front of us, correct? Well, I, I think that's what the second one is here. No, no, this was not the original one. This is one, um, since uh, we, we amended it on, on April 9. Right. Um, because of the status of our meetings, and that's what you have here. The reason I ask is as a reading, um, it says that both the police and fire departments are closed. Is the police department not, I believe that was open. There, this it says, it says right here, police and fire department remain open. Okay. On this, 
but it's very common. I'll see you. The next sentence says, both stations shall be closed to the public. If you need to speak to a police officer, call to schedule an appointment. That's why I'm just asking. We need to change, scratch that with the sentence out of there? Or? Well, I guess we need to clarify. Can, can you give any insight to that? Is dispatch open? Yeah. Now, okay, because the, the one sentence in here says, that both departments remain fully open to staff, but the next sentence says, both stations shall be closed to the public. Even when it was all closed up, people came back. Okay. And we said we spoke to them all back. Okay. The they can come into the lobby, into dispatch? So I would think that sentence should be removed. Yeah, let, does, do we want to have a vote to uh, consider removing that, removing that sentence about the both stations shall be closed to the public? The police department is closed from 12 to 1. Which they can go to the back door. That's reflected on here. Okay. On the hours. Is your station remain closed to the public or back open? If you want to come in and ring the bell like before or? Okay. Well, yeah, it's still ringing the bell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they can. Yeah. Well, that, well, we'll help them at the front office, but. I'm just. I caught that. And I Rob, Rob's going to call it the mayor right now. Probably say fully staffed. I had asked that your move last time. Thank you. Well, my uh, with the way that sentence reads, with that being in there, that both the fire department and the police department remain fully staffed. The way I interpret that is the mayor cannot do layoffs while this proclamation is in effect. So I'd like to leave that line in there. So we're gonna, if he tries to do any layoffs right now and that this proclamation's in effect, he, he could be violating his own proclamation. But anyways, since Rob's gonna clarify that, we'll just move on here on the agenda. Uh, Sounds like he's getting an answer now. I'd rather wait to hear this first. Thank you. 
defend the evidence so high. Arizona and Africa at the same time. My son is saying it's one and he said his, his, his intent was that to be that the lobby area shall be open. You have that lobby area over no. there. Is that okay. fine with you? That's fine, yes. Okay. Stated in here, it has the uh, uh, call and kind of schedule. So I think for now, that's that's probably okay. Well, how many people came in today? That's what I'm asking. Gary, how many people came in today? 36. Yeah. Did they all come in at once? <laughs> yeah, the waiting link must drop them off. But they were banned. They were no, they, they all came in different, plus there was a BZA meeting. So that drew in probably an extra dozen people. There is a line on number 11 that says public meetings will be held via telephone or video conferencing. I know that we have to. Well, what's everybody's thoughts on just wiping out 7, 8, 10, and 11 on that thing? Well, I reread 7 and 8. They don't say that those offices are closed. They're encouraging people to use other forms. So I, I think that's OK. 7 and 8 are OK? I think so. They're not telling you you can't go. Did like, you say you're, you want to do property inspection? We can go ahead and eliminate nine, too. I mean, we're, we've actually got a couple scheduled for, they were old combinations that have been repaired, so that we're actually scheduling them. So get rid of nine, 10, and 11. I, I almost would want to add, uh, Mr. President, to number eight, just to let people know, like I went to pay my taxes through the drive-through last week, and I'm not gonna hand somebody a, a big amount of money without getting a receipt. They won't do receipts there. So I think it might actually, if people are still thinking the same, I think that we should put, add the appointment part to it. Yeah. Like, like let them know, because I was, I, I just appointment. waited until today, like call in, schedule an appointment. I will say to that though, with this being a proclamation, you know, they can yeah. put information out on the city's Facebook page and website to, you know, further spell out the different options. I think yeah. that, that's just my opinion. Okay, so 9, 10, 11, remove. And on the first page, it says both stations shall lobby. Both stations lobby area shall be open to the public. Is everybody okay with those things I just said? Yes, Want to have a vote on it? You gotta make a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, all up there, guy. Aye. Roll. Okay, roll, roll, roll. Um, it was uh, Myers. Yes. So. Yes. Also. Yes. McKeever. Yes. Me. Yes. Truka. Yes. Yoko. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hopefully, they can provide us with a current typed up version of this. This thing.
Next is consideration, reconsideration of legislation 219.20. Yeah, I'll just read the uh, caption back to uh, resolution number 219-2020, authorizing and directing the mayor of the city of Desires, Ohio, on behalf of said city, to apply for a fiscal year 2019 staffing for adequate fire and emergency response and safer grant under the terms set forth herein and declaring an emergency. It was passed by council on the 5th of May of this year. It was vetoed by the mayor on the 15th of May. Is there any public participation on that legislation? I don't know if you want to consider me public or not. Chad Schwimley, Acting Chief of the Cyrus Fire Department. Um, I apologize for me being late this, this evening because um, the Duke, uh, I was at the station getting ready. Engine was already out and with some other stuff. We got put on standby for the city, 3MS. I notified the crew they were making their way back to the station. At that time, we got a call for a run. So the other, the uh, fire truck was directed, I directed the engine to respond to the uh, location, and I ran a squad off to them. So that's why I am late. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank council for, uh, for all their support in this matter. Um, us up at the fire department, we have the, uh, we have the public's best interest in mind. Just like that call, the best interest is get care to that person as quickly as possible. Um, that's that's what we do, and that's what we that's what we live by, and that's what, how we work. Um, we wouldn't jump into this if that wasn't what the case was. We're asking to do more work. Yes, we're asking for more people, but in the end, we want to make the community and the city a better place. So I uh, here for any other questions that you may have. I've actually been uh, talked to several of you uh, council members throughout the past week or so, or past month as this has been going on. Um, I'm always here to answer your questions, and I'll do that with the best of my knowledge and uh, um, and, and with honesty and dignity. Um, so. I just, again, thank you for your service, and if you have any other questions for me this evening, um, please feel free to ask. There's no apology necessary. Thank you for doing what you did before you showed up. Any other questions? Thank you. Yep, thanks. Thank you. Do we have any other public participation? Mr. McKeever. Just to let everybody know, <clears throat> this has been on my mind for the past four weeks. I'm just going to let's tell you right now, I'm voting no. Reasons, I'm not against the fire department. I want us to have something to this effect. I cannot see us financially affording this by ourselves. First year I was voted in the council. Steve Piper and I been to the mayor's office. Mr. Swimley was in there. Mr. Keller. Two gentlemen from Galleon, I don't know their names. We discussed this. I'm for an ambulance service with us providing. It. But Fiscally, I do not see how we can afford it right now. I understand this might be the best, safer grant that may be available. Can't argue about that. But at the end of the third year, it's all in our hands. Completely. We have no, we can't go back to the safer grant and say, hey, well, we need more money. We might be able to, I don't know. I've never had to apply for one, but are we going to get it? Who's to say we're going to get it the second time, if we get it the first time? I want us to do this, but I don't see, I like Greg's proposal with only three people, not six. I agree with that. I think that's a better number. 
I, I'm just saying, I cannot see how we can financially afford it. I'm not going to ask you for a discussion. I'm just stating why I'm voting no. I want this, but financially, I do not see how we can afford it without enough. There's not enough information for me to say yes on the finances. I mean, look, we have to roll over a note, you know, $200,000 note, we just rolled it over. Luckily, interest rates went down, so it's not gonna cost, it costs us $5,000 to roll it over. We gotta pay for that fire truck. The firemen did due diligence to get a good deal on that. I commend you, thank you. I mean, you saved us several, mm -hmm. I don't know how much, probably 100,000 or more. I don't know. I don't know what the actual cost. I just can't see us going in, into this if we get and going into it without Finances being sustained after the third year. I I can't do it with good conscience. I've been called by a lot of people. I've been called by at least 15 people who are opposed to this. They didn't want to come, but they expressed that to my concern. Bill was one of them. He was one of the called. I had several others. I won't mention names, but they called me. Because I represent them, my phone number is available, and I'll stop there. I, I just, they are concerned about it. They want something, but they're also worried about the finances. And they adamantly said they will not vote for any tax increase to cover the deficit if we, if we have a deficit because of taking off the same. They adamantly told me. And just to say, my father has lived in Crawford County for 64 years. And he said this has been going on for 64 years of an ambulance type service between city, private, countywide. They, it has, and 50 years ago, we had twice as much employment here, which could handle the finance better than they can now. But enough said, I just want to let you know I'm not against us doing this. I don't think we can do it now. That's all I have to say. Do any of the other council members have any discussion you'd like to discuss? Mr. Yeah. Myers? Mark, I appreciate you uh, saying that because I know we'll be talking with you that this has been weighing heavy on you maybe let people that don't know you well enough know that you, know, you didn't come to that decision lightly and, and you, uh, I just want to say thanks for being able to give your explanation. I would, with respect, uh, disagree with you though, that I believe that we can't afford not to do it because of knowing what's coming down the road with you know, a decent double, if not a triple or subsidy, we're actually going to be paying more money at the end of this three year period if we don't do this. Uh, so that's where I come to my decision. So I just wanted to clarify that. I actually agree with Kevin. I really feel like it's time for us to do something. And take care of ourselves. Well, like you said, your father said they've been talking about this for 64 years. Um, you guys know where I used to work, what I used to do, and it was talked about every one of those 25 years I worked on there. And uh, that's what I know. It, I guess it's time to, time to go ahead and, and get a plan for and, and we still have till we still have another decision in July on whether we're going to accept it or not. Right. So we're not. This is not binding us tonight to accept this grant. Mr. Uh, President, I'd like to say something too. I know that we financially things are not going to be great, but I would like to look at the positive side and look at this as giving us incentive. Like we need to get businesses here to pay for this. Like to you know put that burden in our ear. There's still. I'm still going to move on, and I'd like to 
look at it that way, hopefully in three or four years, I think maybe the Agile and Service will be making us a little bit of money or breaking even. Where do you have that at? You have it, us actually starting to bring in money on. Mark, just the game of grandma, sorry. I oh, no, this is kind of where I'm at. I'm thinking that it will bring in money. I guess my own comment is the, um, we have an aging population in New Cyrus, and there's going to be more of a need in the upcoming years than ever before that our residents know there is going to be a paramedic ALS ambulance service available if they were to need it. And as the fire chief, acting fire chief said tonight, there was a situation that I don't know if their other trucks were out or if they didn't have the, well, no, we're the right number of trucks on duty that no, they're no. supposed to. It's kind of been a question here the last several months. I got a question since you just mentioned what you did turn right here. Pertaining to what you mentioned when you walked in here, what would have happened if you would have already been here? It would have taken longer for them to respond. They would have had to either, in the current situation, because there's only three on duty, they would have had to have went back to the station and got the got the squad and responded there, or they could have responded directly there and sat there waiting, hoping for a squad to show up. Right. So right. those are those are more or less sort of the two options. Last last two weeks, we had to wait and wait for a squad to get there because ours was broke. Thank you. I mm -hmm. will say to you, Mr. President, that uh, the data supports that every year over the last. 10 years going back, the run volume has steadily increased each year. There was one year out of the 10 that it went backwards and it was only by less than 100 runs. So every year in the last 10 years, minus that one year that took a back pedal of 10, that we've seen an increase in run volume. Even though our population is increasing, our run volume is increasing. That's what the fire department said to, to support the run volume. Yeah, I, I think the run volume is going to keep going up as the population base ages in this area. And does anybody who else would, have any? Who would the billing be handled by? Third party. Okay. I had people ask me that. And in. I said I believed it would be a third party, <clears throat> but I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's, it's Medi-Cal. And that's uh, the, we, we, we get an annual report from them. I mean, we still have monthly correspondence, but annually there was a, uh, they get a rundown of all the runs and stuff that, that was actually in the back of the, uh, um, the, the annual fire report. report. the report you just gave. Yep. And, and those funds will be given to the city for the general fund? I don't know how it's set up right now. Where, do, where does our billing money go? <clears throat> it just it goes into a, it gets tracked as a separate line item, but to, to answer that, you'd have to ask Joyce because we can change, I think we should change what fund that goes into. Yeah. We can make a new fund. Because it needs want. to become a self sustaining It, could, it could be made into a fund just like the water. Fund, whatever comes in from so ambulance stays in a ambulance fund that cannot be diverted other than to cover the cost of ambulances or right. equipment for that. It can't be used elsewhere. It can't be used in the police department. It can't be used <coughs> in the region. If, if the police department, say, seizes property and they auction that, does that money go to a separate fund? Law, law I Yes. To them, for them to, to sustain right. themselves. Yes. Like there's a there's a separate line for them. Okay, that's what I wondered was if it all kind of worked the same way. Okay, does anybody else have any other discussion? <clears throat> for, if I might, uh, one of your questions at least about the third party building. Um, several years ago, some of us went up to some of the surrounding area to the other fire departments, look how they were doing EMS, and one we went to was. I believe it was Finley talking to their chief. His explanation for using third party billing was because it keeps all the HIPAA information out of the fire department. If somebody has a billing problem, they're not calling the fire department, bringing information into, say, Chad, discuss with him. He has no recollection of that. He has no interference with that. If they call the fire department, they're getting the number from Medco or Medi-Cal. They deal with it. That way we have none of that at the station. Any other questions, comments? I'm going to proceed on here. The first thing we need to do is amend 
the original resolution changing the date because they changed the deadline on the safer grant. You can see it on here. The only thing is the May 15th date got changed to May 27th. So, um, need a motion to amend. So moved. Second. The motion by Ms. Allsep, seconded by Mr. Myers. Also. Yes. Myers. Yes. Me. Yes. Truka. Yes. Yoko. Yes. Both. Yes. McKeever. No. Okay, that passed. And then we need a motion to reconsider resolution 219 2020 because the mayor vetoed it. We need uh, two thirds, which would be a five member vote to pass. So we need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, I was Myers and also. Yes. Um, Myers. Yes. Also. Yes. Me. Yes. Truka. Yes. Yoakum. Yes. Oh. Yes. McKeever. No. Okay, that is six votes. So we have got the two thirds we needed. So it passes. Uh, no council members are absent. I don't need to excuse anybody. Any motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Did I get those? I got the phone call to adjourn to 751. Hey, Chris, can you just? I'm definitely going to get the powder. Listen, can I need this? I need to buy these at work. That's where it came out of.